Shalom. Are you a parent with uh, young kids that would like your children to be able to learn Torah, learn Biblical Hebrew as well as Aramaic, and then thereby understand Torah directly without the need for any translations and be able to uh, actually learn languages much quicker because as the sages transmit, the root of all languages is Biblical Hebrew and everything like that. Or if you're just an individual that would like to learn Torah, finally understand, begin to understand the text as well as again learn Aramaic for yourself, what's called Aramaic. Well, Bezrat Hashem, I'd, I'd like to show you the website that we've been working on, which is called, which you could find at ahavahad.org. The easiest way to get to the actual game console, once you're here, is to simply click the Torah Targum game. This is going to open up the tab, but you could actually also go to mytanach.com or mytanach.org or xpsinai.com or experiencesinai.com or xpsinai.org. Uh, Whatever is the quickest way, we'll post the links as well. So just to make it many ways to be able to get into it. To get past the windows, hit enter. To say the Birkota Torah, enter again. And now we can actually begin to, uh, to learn Torah. So I'm going to quickly say the bracha, because I realized that I took a nap and I, I woke up. And every time you wake up from, from a, a sleep for more than an hour or something, that you could say it again. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher Kiddishanu B'Misvotah V'Simanu L'Asok B'Dibrei Torah, V'Ha'arev Na Adonai Eloheinu B'Dibrei Torotech B'Finu B'Fifiyot Amecha, Beit Yisrael, B'Nihiyye Anachnu B'Tzeitzayinu B'Tzeitzay Amecha, Beit Yisrael, Kulanu, Yodai Shemecha V'Oskei Toratecha, Baruch atah Adonai Melamed Torah L'Amo Yisrael, Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher B'Har B'Anu Mikol Ha'amim, Menatan Lanu Et Toratho, Baruch atah Adonai Noten HaTorah. Okay, that's just what you say after, usually in the Siddur, so it's like an automatic, you say, say that after the, the blessing, to be able to immediately start to occupy in the Torah, and you continue the verses there in, in uh, Bemidbar. And so once you open up the website, what you can do, the best way to go about it is to first make it full screen and learn on the same computer for consistency as just uh, how it works best right now. So what you can do also if you want to sign up, hit the create account button and after sign up, which takes 30 seconds, you could use aliases or fake birthdays or whatever you want. Uh, the goal is, is that the actual, it will actually calculate your real birthday, your real lunar birthday. Um, so if you do plug in your actual birthday, that's what it calculates. So when it's now we're not that you know, so it's up to you if you want to do that or not. So once you sign up, immediately go to the Torah books button on the left, and here you will be able to see and select your bar or bat mitzvah parsha. You know, a boy at thirteen, a girl at twelve. This is their Torah portion, essentially what it's called. Uh, and they could unlock it, and really the secret of your life and. Uh, if is here and the Vilna Gaon even says a, a deeper level to this not only is the secret of your mission the actual Torah portion that of the week that you're born that was instituted by Ezra to be able to finish the Torah in a single year and all of the Shabbats and all the Hagim and everything so it's from the prophets themselves it's like a very this is the most accurate thing, you know, people are looking at zodiacs and this and that, but this is a huge principle to understand. Your actual bar, bat mitzvah, parsha, and specifically in uh, the week, the day of the week that you're born, because the parsha divides into seven aliyot for the seven days of the week, and so whatever day of the week you're born, that is that portion is specifically speaking to you, whatever this means at this uh, deep level just to give a little taste and an intro so that this is actually you know a significant thing and important so you want to see what what is going on obviously so we just did parshat vayar balak and so let's enter the next parsha parshat pinhas pinhas ben elazar the son of elazar 
Okay, and this is how the game begins. You could also, sorry, initially select whatever Ketav Shurid font you want. This is the Ketav Shurid font that we're developing at avaechad.org, the most perfect font based on Rabbi Eliezer Adam, the founder of Mechon Melechet Shamaim. The, this most accurate Ketav Shurid font, the, every nuance, and we've implemented more nuances based on the, the, the Mesorah and the scripture. The crown of the kuf has to be slanting slightly forward, as the children discuss in the lesson on the Aleph Bet that you could access here, the 22 keys to life. Anyway, so this is just the font that we select, so you could do that. And the goal, you have the objectives here that you can examine, you know, and begin fresh. Delete extra chapter headings. There is no chapter heading, so, we, you know, you could check that off. It's already done. Um, delete all foreign prakim and chapter breaks. So here, for example, everything, every perek is not really our our part. Essentially, is not is not the correct breaks of the Torah. Those are were inserted around 500 years ago, as Rabbi Tovia Singer Shlita points out, and those are not ours. So we could delete them, and we're going to be able to restore them based on the actual manuscripts that you could access always at the top here in the Abachad, it will bring you to the free download section and you'll be able to download actual manuscripts and check things over you know the more we progress so you know if you do decide to get a membership then you already uh, you could help us forward uh, you know speed up the process you could also sponsor days of learning you know, for different things or for everything together or, and uh, whatever it is. And sponsoring the learning of the kids on this site in the merit of that, Vizrat Hashem. Very significant. But also upon sign up, the book of Tehillim is free for life so that you could always obviously pray to Hashem. You know, you could always access Tehillim just upon sign up. And then you'll be able to go through it and break it down. You see, this is an actual text editor that allows you to finally arrange the Torah and see the structure and beauty and design that is built in. And we made sure that it auto saves your progress. So after you do any change, you know, you hit enter there, you know, I just made a change. It's going to auto save right there. You saw that flash on the screen. Oh, you may not see it actually because, because it's the banner. So let me try to make this a little bit higher. And I'll make it more here because if I remember my camera's on that side. So anyway, let's see if we could do that again. There we go. Okay, so the auto save feature is on. Basically, the goal is to cut down all of the time it takes between you and the Torah. So the way to now begin is to create space for the Targum. And so, that's a complete phrase. So you could break it and leave it on one line. And I'm actually going to show the keyboard viewer here. And you could do that by hitting enter or return. Enter and then return again so that you're leaving this blank space, one blank space in between every single verse and the Targum. So, Pinhas ben El Azar ben Aharon HaKohen. Pinhas, Ben, which is son of Elazar, who is the Ben, son of Aharon HaKohen, the, what's translated as priest, but in Hawaiian, you know, the big kahuna, literally, Kohen Gadol. Heshivet Hamathi Me'al Bnei Yisrael, the one that returned the fury and frustration for the evil that attached itself kind of to Israel and and. Now we're all one nation and we're responsible and all these things that arise with this thing. We're just translating for right now just to give an example. Mal B'nei Israel, kinathi b'tocham. Because he was, he experienced the jealousy that is along with my jealousy. That God is like jealous when people worship idolatry. You know, it's like... If only that they could connect with God in the way that they're trying to connect with things that are not God, essentially. I have to understand that more. We'll see that as Hashem. Velo chiliti et b'nei Yisrael b'kinathi. And I did not... Chiliti is another interesting word, which means like to finish and to, to destroy, essentially, is in the context, God forbid. 
And uh, we'll see that. But also, if you notice that Pinhas, according to the Mesorah, the Yud is a smaller Ot. And so what you can do is hit the small Ot button, which is He, meaning that this is the first symbol that is small in the Torah, Behei Bar'am. With the He, God created the heavens and earth. It's a mnemonic and trick. So you make it smaller. You could even make it sm even smaller if you'd like to emphasize it if that's too small, you know. Undo Command Z. Okay, and there we go. Okay, Lachen Emor Hineni Noten Li Et Briti Shalom. Behold, I am giving him the Brit Shalom. And here, if I may be able to post the actual symbol for the sl the broken symbol Vav, that it actually is supposed to be a Vav Kitua, a symbol Vav that is like broken in half. Uh, you know, and so the symbol is not appearing here how it actually is on a scroll. Here it is, you know, the small yud. Anyway, these are details that we'll be able to understand and what does this even mean and teach us. Okay, Because he was jealous for his God and his power and he completely atoned and removed the thing completely and reset a fresh start, brought a fresh start over B'nai Israel. Okay, so as you could see, we're already, it's already starting to look very structured, especially because the way, the way that we set up the site is that it's centered and so that you can actually, it's like a vis, more visual experience. It's at the center of your vision and focus and we build around that. Okay, and so assuming we'll just jump right now into the Targum, you got the idea. You break it down verse by, verse by verse, bit by bit. Long verses could be broken down even more. The goal is to have that space between every single verse. And now we'll enter the world of what's called Targum, which is the meaning of these words. Because these words are the words themselves, and the Targum is the meaning of the words, and the helper against him, this kind of concept a helper when it explains cryptic parts of the text and against him when it challenges the actual word by highlighting a synonym to that word which then begs the question what is the difference or pay attention that it's this word and not this other word because there's no synonyms in biblical hebrew every word is so specific because it is a programming language there's no thing to things that code for one thing. It would run the code or get an error, God forbid. Everything is so concise and so precise, so deliberate. And we have to examine that. That's what's called the Mesorah and all the Mesoratic symbols, excuse me, the Mesoratic symbols. <laughs> Got excited there. Which is a small circle next to the word or is next to the part in the word that's very obscure or very unique to, to tell you that this is not a typo this is how it's supposed to be written inscribed here which is one of the most essential symbols but it's been dropped because people just to save time and the logic is is that the fact the word is spelt here this way means that this is how it's supposed to be spelt but the thing is that it still takes away from the experience because you wouldn't notice sometimes how unique this word is here or how strange this word is here if it wasn't for that Mesoratic circle. Anyway, it's just another small detail. But basically, it's going to start to look more and more beautiful. The more we understand Torah, the more beautiful the actual Torah is going to look structurally even. And that's what we're about to see. So let's turn on the meaning of the Torah, and that's by clicking this green eye, which activates the visibility of Targum. And now you see that the Targum layer. Now to get into the Targum layer to actually edit the text, now we see it. That turns on the visibility. Simply click Targum, and now this is the active layer. And as you can see, it's highlighted now in magenta or pink. And so now you can click inside the beginning of the first word, of the Targum and hit enter to now lower the entire text into the space that we've just created. And now it, this is 
where the fun begins essentially this is the point of the game this is where it starts to become the gaming like experience meaning the old arcade games where you button mash and everything like that this is where it goes okay the goal is to now push the text and line it up under directly and this process is what teaches you Torah but what this process is literally is physically occupying in the Torah in a fun way which is protection and, and brings you pleasure and joy and all the good things in this world. And it's the experience of Zerat Hashem that everyone will get to have. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. To move the text, you hit spacebar. You may notice that it takes a little bit of a long time. So what you could do is now press the tab button. Let me just make sure that I'll quit Carbiner. Yeah. Okay, and now you could press tab. Okay, tab is going to jump spaces. So initially when I start, when you start all the way from the right side, hit tab. Once you get into the actual word, directly under the word, now use the space bar to nudge it in place. I'll demonstrate the colors on the next go around. But right now this is the start of the game. Umalil Hashem. Vaidaber Hashem becomes Umalil Hashem. And we'll learn that Hashem's name really has three yuds in the Targum. So what you can do is either type a yud or copy and paste a yud. So there's three yuds. And now you could clearly see like there's three yuds in God's name. Whatever this means, these, you know, this very deep teaching. There's many ways and configurations, but that's how it is in the manuscripts. You'll be able to see that, Bezrat Hashem. Okay, and now it says, Umalil Hashem imoshe lememar. And Hashem spoke with Moshe, saying, okay, once you get to the end of the verse, hit enter and enter to now lower the continuation of the text to the next line. Again, hit tab to get into the text. Once you're into the text, use the space bar and the backspace, you know, like a delete to make sure that it's exactly where you want. Once the word is there, click after the word, push the rest of the words click after the word, push the rest of the words, and like this, you're starting to like weave the text together. You're starting to connect the Targum to the Torah. You're starting to see how, what is Aramaic really, that it bends the words a little bit. It's, uh, for example, ha-kohen, kahana. You have the word kohen there, but it's, you know, it's sli said slightly different. It throws you off a little bit. Because again, it's written also in Hebrew in the in Aleph Bet as well. So it's again, it's not a different language is the realization that will come to. It hides the most amazing information as we'll see why it's so ancient and mysterious and amazing. And we'll see all of that. And it all develops naturally, it grows with you. In this process in itself is what's called Shnaim Mikra Vecha Targum, going through the text twice. And one time, at least, with the Targum in Aramaic, which is Aramit, which is this heavy, accented Hebrew, which is the partner, the helper against him to the text. Ezer Kenegdo to the text is Navachad, original like revelation, if we could say such a thing. Or uncovering, because really that's that's exactly what it is. It's saying the words explicitly. It's helping us go through these cryptic words. The more, the deeper in Tanakh, in the scripture you go, the original 24 books signed and sealed by the last living prophets on earth, and none other. That prophecy in biblical Hebrew, in the symbols in their true forms, you know, and none other. Then, over there, we have to. <laughs> sounded so cool again it's just so real and so amazing and so that's really what it is i mean movies end and books end but this is meshes with reality i mean this is crazy how real it all is okay as you could see in the meantime as we're talking we're weaving together the targum to the torah assuming that we're understanding it as just sort of a literal flipping into this other language. That's how initially we start to understand it. That's how we're maybe taught or whatever. God forbid no one's fault. But here we're now trying to cut out all of the time it takes for the realizations in a way. Not to spoil things, but to help us bring us up to speed on very important things. So that we could start to enjoy and get to where we need to be right away. So we're not missing out anymore. Like, that's the goal. 
Okay, and now you could see how nice it's already looking, how it's being woven together, how the sages are walking us through these words, and we'll see now what we mean by the helper against him when we do the colors in just another moment. As I'm just going to finish this section. It's very easy, it could be very therapeutic, relaxing. It teaches you Aramaic at the same time, very effortless. And uh, <laughs> it's just going to be opening up all these doors for you, Vizrat Hashem, because this is the way that the sages didn't leave us sort of without the, any keys to anything and just flailing around in darkness, God forbid. And uh, that's not how a good God does to humanity and never did that to humanity and in fact gave them everything and initially created the best universe that one could ever even imagine. And it was man who failed and sinned and let, got left that initial place. And then after the sexual sins of the flood, which then destroyed the world, the state of the world even more. And we don't know how many times that happened again, but it's the people who ruin it, not God and all these kinds of things. Okay, very good. As you can see here, it's already getting jambled. So you'll be able to turn off the visibility to the Targum layer so you'll be able to continue and break down the verses. Here's like a very long verse. You could break it down like that. There's many ways to break it down, but um, usually I find that when you break it correctly, it still looks very beautiful and symmetrical. It's proportionate. All these things have to be examined too. How many characters in one verse? What does this teach you? All of these things are so significant because how does, how do you communicate everything in such a limited amount of space is that when everything teaches you everything it needs to, everything is significant and deliberate and on purpose. And a uh, alien wisdom designed this and designed this whole universe. Okay, and this is a space. This means a ptucha, means that the space is open, patuach, till the end of the line. And so what you could do is we have a clipboard and you could copy and paste a visual for that. You could either leave it or if you want to replace it, that's what it means, a ptucha. I'll actually leave it and then paste it after, showing that a ptucha means an arrow. You see, like, this is a space, and the arrow is pointing till the end of the line. When you look at an, an authentic scroll, it's the end of the paragraph, space till the end of the line, and the next section begins a new section. It might have a connection, but it's already, a, like, its own established section, as opposed to the other breaks, a stuma, which, which shows much more of a link in information. That's how we understand... That's how I understand it right now. You know, if you know more, please let me know. Credit to you. So that's uh, that is how the game develops, and we're moving, you know, and lining things up. And a way to actually change layers, you can have. A, you can see that in the shortcuts menu, where you press the the button next to the number one, and it's going to now cycle through the layer, saving you a bunch of time. So now I want to get into the Targum layer. I see that it's illuminated. Immediately click inside. Now I'm able to line it up. And now we're going to demonstrate the colors. We got to the end of like a, a true section in the Torah. And here you could actually see an interesting thing. All of a sudden there's this extra word here. So that's where we now bring in color. Initially we, we bolded things. And we had this parallel engine we explained in a previous video. A parallel invention that I uh, had no idea that there were people who did that before like from 1980 something apparently you could see it on safaria.org right Okay, and now to be to demonstrate the color as you're lining it up. Hmm. Okay, we'll leave that and now we'll get right into it. 
first of all, as the first time that you go through it and you're breaking down the text, that is actually the first time you're doing the, the first part of Shnai Mikra, which is Mikra, Mikra, and Targum. So you did one time Mikra already. The next time, after you go through and break down the text, and now once you line up the Targum, that is the second time you are now fulfilling the, the next two. You're doing Mikra by scan, looking at the Targum and looking up at the Torah and uh, lining it up. And it goes through the final two. And, and in this fashion, you actually complete Shnai Mikra, the Echad Targum. Twice the Mikra, Mikra, as you can see here, Ma Nikra. It is what is read. And what is read is what is scribed. And what is scribed is what is called the scribed written Torah. Okay, and now we begin. By Daber Hashem El Moshe Lemor, Umalil. Let's get into the Targum layer by hitting that shortcut. And now we want to change the color. So what you do is highlight. Why do I want to change the color? For example, by Daber, the Targum is Malil. Malil, I would highlight a dark red, a conflicting Targum, which dark red is like a warning label, a stop sign, a red light, you know, hold on, pay attention, proceed with caution essentially, because there's something going on. So this is the aspect of Kenegdo challenging the Torah word, because Vaidaber, we have that word, and the Targum is Umalil, we have that word as well in Biblical Hebrew, as in the verse in Tehilim that said before, by Ashkenazim before Birkat Amazon, Mi Yimalel Gvurot Hashem Yashmiya Kol Tehilato, who could possibly put to words, because Malel is from the word Milim, I guess, as the sages explain, and you know, Rav Moshe Shapir's it's all, Malel is Milim, but Vaidaber is a very different thing. It's not just words that, that somebody could be shouting words in the middle of a desert, you know, and whatever. Who, who is there to hear it and whatever. So it's not just about words, or you could write words on a page. It's not just about words. Vaidaber means a conversation, a face-to-face. Vaidaber means the speaker, the receiver, and the contents of the communication. It's like the symbol Aleph. That's Vaidaber. It's a connection. Lemor means saying. So God's speaking and having a conversation, saying the following to Moshe. And that it is Pinhas, as translated as Phineas. But Pinhas, the son of Elazar, the son of Aharon HaKohen, saved the whole nation just now with his decisive action. So, the word malil is highlighted to distinguish that change. El, all of a sudden, is im, is with. We have that word also in Hebrew. But because it's like a positive word, as we'll explain in momentarily, instead of the dark red conflicting, like warning kind of scary, darker color, obviously, the magenta, the pink, is a brighter color, the color of hod, as Rabbi Zemir Kohen Shlita teaches, which means to make known or reveal. And so it's an appropriate color for when the Targum reveals like a beautiful thing. Because the text says, El Moshe, to Moshe. What does it mean, to Moshe? Like in the Targum, what is written here is Im Moshe. It's with Moshe. And that's like the difference. Like, God, I'm not talking to you. I'm speaking with you. It's a very different thing. I'm not giving you commands. I'm speaking with you. Lemor, saying the following. So that's already starting to see the color and the aspect of now implementing the lessons of the Aleph Bet, whereby the symbol Mem, we learn that Mem is for a Ma'amar. It's like a container, but that's open, meaning it's a teaching or saying that's open to be understood, to be explicit. And so here Hashem is now speaking explicitly that it's Pinhas, the son of Elazar, the son of Aharon, HaKohen, literally how specifically. Heshivet Hamafi Me'al Ben Israel was the one to, to remove the, the karma that was heading to Israel's way, God forbid, for the people who fell the nation. It's very, it's a, beyond the scope of this, but essentially we're all responsible for one another. Not the initial nation sin, but there's a bunch of newcomers who could join for not the right reasons and, uh, if they convert, it's a very dangerous area. They should only do so if it's their true desire for not 
any other ulterior motives and things and to be to be sincere of course to leave as in the story of root which is why she begins the prophetic writings the grandmother of mashiach the grandmother of david amelech and shlomo great grandmother yeah so that line <clears throat> right okay so as you can see, it, it, it's continuing. And this is very literal so far, so there's not even much uh, to do with respect to color. Here, Pinhas has the symbol Hen hiding in his word, in his in, in the name is Hen, as the symbol Het. Also a Pei. And a Nun as well. which is like paneach, tzafnat paneach, to reveal also. But also, Pinhas has the hen, which is favor. It's like finding favor. Noach, you know, the same symbols. Noach found hen, the same symbols reversed, found favor, and this open door before the eyes of the infinite being. Okay? Vekano, zbeshe kana, bedekane. Because he was jealous for the infinite God, that God's children are being uh, taken away from God and being made, being made to focus on a bunch of garbage. <laughs> God forbid. Velochiliti, and I did not. The targum is end. I did not end along with the children of Israel. Bekinathi with my jealousy. So it's interesting. Isn't jealousy a not good thing? But this is what it teaches you, a jealousy, even jealousy. There is a good jealousy and an evil jealousy. Maybe that's the distinction between envy. We'll see. But lachen emor, therefore say, hineni, here I am. Okay. So here, very literal so far. This was actually not the greatest example of showing the different colors. Well, here also you could have... Kinati, betocha means within them. Beinehon means like amongst them. So it's a nuance. What exactly does it mean? Also, Aharon has a he hiding backwards. He Aleph, you know, spelt like that. As well as a nun, because a nun only needs another nun. It hides behind itself, kind of. There could be an infinite amount of nuns behind there. All you need to spell nun is nun. Another nun. So it spells itself, kind of. So it's always hiding wherever it appears, whatever this means I could only point it out at this point in time in the hopes of that together we'll understand how to really understand what is going on fully and all these uh, all these meanings so that's an even deeper level to actually add the Aleph bet every time this one also has Kohen has a hey and a nun you know the hey is spelled hey hey it's another symbol that could be spelled using only itself and a nun is another symbol with only itself so bekanot kinati betocham, velo chiliti et bnei Israel bekinati, and I did not chiliti. It's a very interesting word to end. Vayichal in our versions, but in the manuscript it's different. Sheitzethi is to end. Chiliti is also has the word kol and kala, a bride, but kala is to destroy also. What is all of that about? The fact that these symbols are connected teaches you things. Anyway, we could only point it out at this point in time. I could only point it out. Lachen, therefore, bechen. So the lachen became bechen. So what's the difference between lachen and bechen? That's also different. Also here, it highlights a male or chaser. So here, up above, it has... Uh -huh, so the color there is not working. I would like to highlight that. There we go. The yud is supposed to be highlightable red. There we go. I don't know. Slight glitch. Hopefully we'll be able to fix it again. Uh, you know, the more people that sign up, we'll be able to fund our programmer. We'll get a new new person. 
unfortunately, uh, you know, the programmer had to move on to bigger things uh, for himself, which is, I totally understand and I so much appreciate the work that he did for building the site. You know, Mr. DB, I won't say his name if he doesn't want me to say his name, of course, but uh, thank you very much, obviously, for building the site. Okay, and here also you can highlight, hopefully be able to highlight even the vowel points to highlight lo, here it's spelled with a cholam, and here it's spelled with a kamatz. This is very in detail. What do these nuances mean and teach us? I can't say. I can only point it out in hopes of actually asking, you know, if someone else knows, please let me know. So ha-ana, here I am. That is the targum here, hineni, God is saying, here I am. And where do you recognize that I am here? In the following, that noten lo et briti shalom, I am commanding gazar, noten is to give, gazar is to like decree, so it highlights the difference, gazar, gezera, you know, gezera kasha has shalom, gezera tova, hopefully, amen, uh, you know, bezrat you don't say amen to your own bracha, as the sages actually teach, but uh, that was more of like a, a, a cue for someone else, Whoever hears like a good blessing, you know, saying Amen is a big thing. Vehaita is a very special word, obviously, because it has God's name hiding in it and the symbol Tav, which is Emet. Vehaito ulizar'o. Zar'o is his children. Livnohi. So, lizar'o is his seed. The Targum is Livnohi, to his children. What, what is the difference? Why specify the seed? And once, why, is, we have the word Libanib. Lo u Libanab, why? So maybe it means that he didn't have children at this point in time. So it means his seed, his continuation. Maybe that's a possible answer right now that just came to me. And that's an important feature. To be able to ask the question and phrase it in words, as uh, Dr. Walwaski Shali just said. This kind of concept of being able to Put it in words. If you could say it in words, then you can do it. You can understand the math problem. If you could say the steps in, under, in words. Same with the question, too, if you can actually ask it. And then by asking the question, that now creates the vessel to be able to receive the answer. Hearing the question and finally asking it out loud now creates the this concept of an answer. You brought that ability and power and if you see that people are not answering any of these questions that you're asking that might mean that you might be the one to be able to answer them so keep learning Torah and praying to the infinite being for wisdom from where all wisdom understanding knowledge experience protection everything good comes from okay noten lo et briti the targum is kayami so here you could do a conflicting one or if it's like a positive word you know Brit is kayam, means an existence. Briti, the existence of shalom and peace and shalem, being complete, that he is complete with me all the days. So it's in, Targum here is actually without the vav, you know, it's interesting. I mean, it's normally without the vav, but like shalom is written with a vav fully, and the Targum like highlights it by not having a vav here. And so it's a full peace, a full, complete. Uh, appropriate, you know, for that word to be written with the vav complete. So now, as you can see, it's starting to look really nice. It's starting to look very colorful. There's different things happening now. We're getting aware and seeing of, you know, these things. Everything's coming together. We're learning the Aramaic. Le is lo, you know, vehaita uthehe le, you know, kiyam is the brit, kiyum. It's even in modern Hebrew. Ahara, Bathrohi, and this is the English after, you know, Bathar, after, after him, Aharav, Kayam Olam, and here Olam is written Male, and the Targum again highlights it by being Chaser, Tahat, which means under, and, or, that's how it's translated, but really the Targum is Halaf, in place of, Tahat, is in place of it's switching it's like that indiana jones you know switching it immediately halaf to change it exchange it in exchange for being jealous for the god and being jealous on behalf of god and standing up for what is right and 
being brave in the true sense of these words. I just, oh, excuse me. All right, sorry about that. I had to clear my throat for a second there. Okay, here we go. So yeah, as, as we said, because he was jealous for the infinite God and atones completely. That's the word chaper, as opposed to the other words. Slach lanu, mechal lanu, chaper lanu. And the acronym is Samech. Slach, mechal, Chaper. Chaper is the third and final level, which is a complete removal entirely of any of uh, the problems. It's really undoing any problem and any evil. And that's an amazing level. The Shem here, you could highlight again that instead of there being a Yud there, because this could be with a Yud or without a Yud as well. So you could highlight that. Ish, Guvra, Bar Yisrael, son of Yisrael. Hamuke is ketila, to ketil, to ketil him, to kill him. That's where the word probably comes from. Hamuke is to kill, so it's a, it's different because hamuke means the one that was hit. Targum is ketila, the one that was killed. Deit ketil, that caused himself to be killed. Interesting. That's what deit that he did it to himself. So you could try to break up the colors just so you could see it visually. Huka, it's a share. Hitka, it should be, I guess. God forbid, or whatever. Et is also different because it's et hamidianit. And the Targum is im midianita, with. So Zimri, this is the name, unfortunately. What does this teach you? Why him? Why did he fall into this level? Nasi is the Targum Rav to teach everyone a lesson. I, I don't know. Like, God forbid, why, why would this happen? Nasi, the Targum, is Rav. What's the difference between Rav? We have the word Rav also. Ba is like, you know, Av is flipped. Le Shimon, what does it mean, Le Shimon? Le Veit Shimon, to the house of Shimon. So you could highlight that either in a, in a magenta to make, like it makes it known. Okay, and now you could see that the colors and everything is really coming together. We're understanding on a deeper level. We're asking the questions, at least now, finally, and what is the difference? And we're trying to really see how to understand Tanakh now on a very deep level, proper level.
and like in in this fashion each week you go through it you're going to learn all the basics of aramaic you're going to start to understand the torah you're going to under, understand how how to detect these nuances and how to really understand people the end of lying the end of people uh you know misunderstanding things and one another and understanding the nuance and the de- the depth and how different things communicate different things and it's an amazing thing an amazing experience will open up all these different languages to you as well the source and roots of all languages it's an amazing claim and that's what you can experience for yourself you know as uh yeah someone uh you know i don't know if to quote it because i you know i don't want to get any uh, political but uh yeah i won't say that belief if it's about belief that it is not required essentially we'll see what that's about but yeah thank you very much for watching i hope this was an interesting video and uh, i'll speak to you later you know if you have any comments questions let us know in the chat let us know uh and we'll get back to you immediately thanks or as soon as possible you know now the actual live people and not an animated automated uh ai all right thanks a lot